because it's really, really easy to make a ship that is heavy as hell and still turns, uh, especially with the new tools, the new blocks that Kunchi has given us in the latest update, which I'm sure people are using to good effect, but I thought I'd make a video just covering some of the basics of thruster placement and using the new blocks so that your giant ship that is unnecessarily huge doesn't suck at turning and you can actually move with it and we'll go over some basic maneuvering like the retrograde burn too so that you can pilot like a champ so I went and built this ahead of time we're gonna add on to it um, a lot of crew quarters a lot of generation it's got room to expand here I threw some iron stone on it there's a lot of iron parts I'm just gonna I'm just going to be adding a whole bunch of weight to it um, before we even get to thrusters, just to just to make sure that we're really pushing it to the max here. So let's see. Let's add some more power generation. And I'm not mirroring. Cool. Whoops. Get some more of that power in there. Add some more shields. So we're going to try to make something. It's not going to be pretty, but uh, it's going to be fast enough. It's going to be agile enough. And it's going to be. It's going to be one fat mama. We're going to make it big and heavy. We're going to be able to put lots of cores in it. Okay, what is that shield? We got 123,000 shield hit points, so that should be fine. Um, okay. What's going on there? I don't know what happened there. Let's get rid of that. And slap one of these on. Okay, well, uh, the symmetry might be a little messed up on the ship, but uh, that's fine. Let's cover it in some iron armor. Get some of that hull HP going. And for that, we're just gonna we're just gonna go ahead and throw these massive armor chunks on here. So we're going to do all this before we even mess with thrusters. Um, just so we can make sure she's real heavy. Okay, so we made an unnecessarily large ship. Let's add, let's add some more weight. Who cares? Stone? Cool. So we got six million mass, six point two. How many cores do we get in here? One, two, three, four, five, six upgrade slots. Cool. And no turning. Basically none. No turning. And pretty much no stopping. 
looks like one meter per second breaking. I might actually run into something while we're building. All right, so first of all, we're going to want to use these directional thrusters. You might have to refit older ships with them if uh, you used omnidirectional thrusters, but these are going to be your bread and butter for fixing up a ship so that it can turn, even one as fat as this one. Um, so for directional thrusters, we want to place them with some care away from the center of gravity or center of mass here so that they can have the most effect. We're going to put some back here and you want to point them in the direction that you're aiming for. So straight off, we will go for pitch up and down. That's pretty easy to accomplish here. I'm just going to be slapping these things on, but leave some space for them in a design. Throw, throw some thrusters on. Get a core, get a core uh, thruster block. Once you do your uh, engines and all of your systems at the skeleton of your ship, if that's how you're doing things, uh, that way you can kind of have a head up when it actually comes to fixing it up after it's done. Okay, so we're going to throw some of that here. What are we looking at? Oh, our roll's looking good too because we're spreading them out a little. Okay, so there we've got some up and down and some roll. Let's start working on that yaw. So for that, we want side to side action far away from the center of mass. So we're going to put some over here. We're going to flip them. I think that's facing out. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. That's not helping our yaw too much, is it? About 2.02 .02 radians a second. So yeah, I, kn I know I'm just slapping them on and it's looking really ugly. It would be a miracle if we could get this thing to actually look good, but that's not what we're aiming for today. I just want to show you guys some of the basics of placing these things. Alright, so we got some sideways stuff going on here now. That yaw is going up. The roll is also going up. We got some up and down, some side to side. Got a lot of roll. Let's get a little bit more. That's getting pretty goofy. Oh well. We're just we're not going for aesthetics. Just trying to just trying to prove a point here. And the thing is, you you will see some diminishing returns uh, if you have a really high mass and you want to use you want it to handle really well. You're gonna see some diminishing returns between how much power your thrusters give and a huge mass of your ship. Um, this is already turning pretty well for uh, for how big this ship is. 8.69 million. I know people have made much larger ships, but I think this is a good uh, middle ground for most people that would be having an issue with this. Um, it's a little more complex when you get into the uh, 
capital ships and really, really, really big ones. So now we got we got workable yaw yeah, petrol. Um, that's looking okay. No break thrust yet. We will kind of just keep going indefinitely. Probably. Oh, we got we got more than more than none at least. But so uh, what we could do here for brake thrust is put directional thrusters this way. Um, directional thrusters pointed in the forward and backward position will sometimes help out your yaw value as well. It's not in its current position, but uh, so that adds some brake thrust. Not a lot, not enough. But uh, Kunchi in the latest update gave us these inertia dampeners, which are only available in iron materials and avorian. Um, give them a kind of little bit of a cost to uh, the weight of your ship. But uh, these add a real good amount of brake thrust for their size. They're expensive, um, so you're gonna you're gonna have to balance out some of your material use here and your money if you really are really want to make a big ship to use. Um, Sixty-five break thrust. Let's go for ninety-six. How's that? You can see I've selected my ship so we can see our velocity. And our acceleration's not great. If we oh, I burned out my burned out my stuff. But we're breaking. Oh, real quick, let's add some batteries. and more engines and we are also severely under crude but these engines push us along a little bit better I'm not gonna go into balancing your power and your all of all of this stuff. There's a whole lot of other things that need to be done for whatever your ship's purpose is and whatever your style is a plan, but alright, here we're at top speed of five hundred fifty four meters per second. We'll lay off that and would you look at that, it just comes right to a stop there. So those inertial dampeners are going to help um, the big ships and the small ships, if you want a little bit of a cheatsy doodle, they kind of kind of make directional thrusters pointing forward like this a little obsolete. Um, but there's some economy issues that make directional thrusters cheaper to use, and sometimes they give bonuses to your yaw or, or even your uh, pitch. So the other thing we've got to play with here is the gyro array. Um, also kind of expensive, but they uh, increase mostly your roll, a little bit of your, a little bit of your other stats as well. Um, it's about a four to one ratio of roll to anything else that you're doing. And these, I th I don't think, I don't think these really make a difference how far they are from your center of mass. While I was uh, experimenting with it earlier, I I don't think they really do much for that. But uh, they'll help out your roll. 
Will it be more than just doing some good thrust replacement? I don't know. Um, and it would always be more effective to uh, you know, have some wings that actually come off of here away from the center of mass with some directional thrusters up and down and left and right and just having thrusters out there because then it would spin you around a lot easier. But uh, helped out our roll a bit. I'm gonna throw some more directional thrusters on here. I know it seems like I'm putting a lot of thrusters on it. Sometimes you have to to uh, get a ship that actually goes somewhere. It's just something you have to account for in the beta branch. If you're not used to it, get used to designing thrusters into your ship instead of just slapping them on haphazardly like this. Um, but anything, anything works. So we've got 11 and a half million meters cubed now for volume. Let's add some more power generation just so I can boost around and show you maneuvers now. Let's get some of that trinium. So yeah, put your, get your thrusters away from the center of mass marker. I don't know how hard it is to see, but put your directional thrusters facing the direction that they'll be operating as far away from that as possible and basically you'll be good. Uh, experiment with it if you got to. I'm not gonna do a whole physics lesson but I just wanted to give the rundown on how we can make a really massive ship that still turns. Alright so we got some more boost. Alright so another thing is the drift has increased with uh, newer beta branch updates, so people are uh, and the and the engines have increased acceleration. So I was running into asteroids a lot. I know other people were can't brake very easily. Um, one thing to do to test my braking is I like to get going at basically my my cruising speed here find a marker in the distance and wait till it gets to a nice round number of distance get pretty close to it and let off and we'll see how fast we break and it's about one and a half kilometers so that's the braking distance of this massive ship the ships that I that I use have less. I make really lightweight ships with not a lot of thrusters. I don't really care to stop instantly in space. Doesn't matter that much to me, but if you want to make a big ship stop fast, you can. This one this one stops pretty quick. Let's test our faith here. Yeah, not gonna be headbutting any asteroids in that. Um so that's this guy. Um, let's move to a different ship for this. This is the ship that I've been using on multiplayer. Um, really light, 0.4 million meters cubed. I need to rebuild it soon because I'm getting into Xanian territory and all my cannons and stuff that I have on are throwing my ship around and other people are throwing my ship around but as it stands I I have like 17 turrets on this thing because I got some artifacts on a 0.4 not even a half million meter cubed ship I'm, I've been using it late game you don't need you don't need a lot of ship to get by in the game if you make a really lean design it can work really well for you this one, the skeleton is basically shield gens, power gens, and then a little bit of hull on top. And so, not a lot of hull HP, got enough shield to get by, it's kind of a fast attack thing. But uh, I'll show you what some maneuvers are, if you don't know the basics. Um, 
What you see in front of me that's following my cursor around is the new prograde marker that you can add. Um, this is in the latest update. Put retrograde marker, prograde marker on, and you get that guy in front of you that shows you where you're drifting to. So I can turn here and it'll show me that I'm still drifting in this direction in case you can't tell on your own. We'll thrust in this direction a little bit. And there we go. Now we're drifting over here. Now we're drifting over here. And right now I'm kind of close to drifting into that asteroid, so we'll go over this way. All right, so that helps with your drift if you have no idea what you're doing with the new slidey, drifty physics. Um, but also, something that I use a lot uh, that you may or may not have to use depending on how you built your ship um, is the retrograde burn. It's a really, really basic maneuver, really easy, and it lets you go really fast and stop really fast if you need to. So we'll just go ahead and burn over here real quick. Look behind us. Boom, there's the retrograde marker. Point your ship at that thing burn in the opposite direction. Look, I stopped. Wow. Wow. Whereas my regular braking at similar speeds is pretty bad. I'm just I'm drifting all over the place. That's not cool. But look. Retrograde burn. Boom. Stop my ship. So if you really want to get someplace in a hurry, um with the flight assist on, all of this is. I'm not going to get into what happens with your flight assist off. But uh, if you really want to get across a sector in a hurry or get into a fight in a hurry, then that can be a very useful maneuver. How far away? Let's find something kind of far away to fly to. 50k. All right. So let's let's fly 50k at top speed and we'll see how long it'll take us to stop with a retrograde burn. Whoop. All right, time to turn around. And I'm looking at my distance just under 5k here. Do Burn in the opposite direction. Completely stopped. Use that or lose it. It's a good thing to have in your in your toolbox of maneuvers. So let's say we wanted to go fight with this pirate. I don't have any weapons, but <laughs> we'll, we'll pretend. Let's go burn his direction real quick. Then I'm going to look back, find the prograde marker, start the flip. Watch my distance. I'm definitely in engagement distance. Boom. Stopped. Kick some ass. So that's just some basic maneuvering, some basic building stuff you can you can do to make your ship turn a little bit faster so that I can stop seeing people bitching on the forums about how their ships don't turn no more in the new beta updates. You're going to have to adjust to the game changing a little bit if you're playing the beta branch it's just how it is but uh hopefully i can help some people before they take to the forums and bother kunchi with with anything um hopefully i've helped if you got any questions or anything drop them in the comments or message me or something find me send a carrier pigeon smoke signals whatever you got bye